depends on a lot of things. But depends yeah. Depends on what kind of antenna you've created. Right. And, and it depends a lot on of times you can extend it with even a Pringles can. Yep. So it depends too on what what is in the middle. So if there's like uh, metal, like you know, if a lot of these walls around here have metal in them, that uh, makes it harder to get through. Like the refrigerator, it's not going to get it through your refrigerator. A glass window might be easier for it to get through. Right. When I was working at St. Joe's, you could never get any cell phone coverage underneath the MRI machine. <laughs> it just with all of this metal and magnets and everything else above you, then you're not getting anything. How risky is it when I go on uh, when I go to the service that I pay? I pay AT and T Uverse uh, twenty five dollars a month or so to uh, monitor my malware and so forth. And once in a while when I get a screw up on my computer, I call him up and I get a, a guy on the phone and he checks my credentials out and he says uh, he's going to gain access to my computer. So he sends me a pop-up, i got to click on it, and yeah. he tells me his name. Then he comes in and I see going through all my files. That's probably not a problem because you're the one calling them and asking them initiated. to do it. Yeah, what yeah. if he's copying down, can he copy down some data that I'm typing in? A, then he takes it home and sells it to the Russians? Could he? <laughs> yes. Uh, so there you go. Another leak in the he media. could. Trust no one. Well, um, so, but, but, but now you got to say, wait a minute. Um, to get any serious money, you can't do retail, you got to do wholesale. Yeah, how much money is he going to get from selling your one account and he endangers his job doing it. So, uh, of all the things I'm going to worry about, that's not one of them. Okay, that's it, good. It's kind of like, you know, like your credit card information and whatnot. If you have initiated the phone call, there's there's little risk in the phone Okay, calls. yeah. If somebody calls you out of the blue, just like you got that phone call from Microsoft, my brother-in-law also got that phone call. <laughs> and he gave them access to his computer. And... They, they clicked around and showed him some stuff, and then all of a sudden they wanted payment. And the way that they wanted him to pay them, and they flat out told him, go to 7-Eleven and mm -hmm. buy a green dot credit card. Yeah, they Put this much money on that card, call me back, and give me the PIN number. Mm -hmm. Because all they want to do is just make a, a cash transaction on it, which is right. untraceable. You're, you're the second person to mention green dot credit card. The first time was yesterday for this guy. Yep. You know, what and the hell's a green dot credit and, card? And my it's, mom, it's I thought it was like yeah, an ultra plush premium. I got a no, black card. Like Amex, 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 Amex. It's a little burner credit card that is untraceable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, and my mom has received three of these phone calls. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Linux administrator as a profession. And just praying that one day one of these guys calls me because I want to have yeah. fun with them. Well, so I, I did that. One guy called me and says, you're having a problem with your Windows computer. Now, I don't, I don't run Windows. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on a, on a phone number that I knew they didn't have any way of associating with me or my computers and stuff. And so, you know, you get to you know, talk to them a little bit about, you know, what kind of problem am I having and, you know. And, you know, but that, that raises one other thing. Um, if you have any data that is not backed up, think about that. Because one of the ones, it's, it's uh, you know, those green dot cards factor into this, or bitcoins is also used, is a thing called crypto wall. And what they do is they, they get into your computer through whatever means they do, it doesn't matter. But what they do is they encrypt the entire contents of your computer. And then it's like, you want the key to get your data back? I know a guy. Them. I know a guy who did that, and it, it was going to cost him like eight hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and decided to spend the eight hundred dollars wow. because the the information was important enough to them. Yep. Yeah. So, so did they actually give him the proper key. Um, yeah, so, so they want far, this to work, right? So they don't want you to say to your buddy, oh, I had that happen, and don't give it, you know. So they will give you the key to unlock it. Yeah, everything I've seen says they, they you know, they're, if you can call them honest thieves. But, you know, they do because if word gets out that they don't, then no the one will ever pay done. them again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're, they're making millions of dollars through this scam. I mean, the other... Just a couple of days ago, I read about a police department, um, I think in Illinois, where that happened. And to get their data back, they, they coughed up the six or eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I was on uh, television, and I was surprised how cheap it was to buy it back. I thought they would. 
but it's if for it's, thousands of dollars. So it was only if like it's too much, you know, what you have to do is you have to gauge at what point do you say, I can get along without this stuff. Yeah. It's not worth that amount of money. So, you know, I think when they talk 600, whatever, it's like, okay, that's right at the point where it's like, that won't kill me to do it. And I really want my data back. Yeah, what the hell, I'll do it. I wonder if they factor in like how big your hard drive is too. Chances are the bigger hard drive, the more you spend. Uh, like, oh, it's gonna be uh, a tiny hard drive, 100 bucks. Yeah, well, see, about. see, but then <laughs> even even that depends because you get you know first time parents and every single picture of the newborn is right. on that drive. Right. That's the that's the ones that you <laughs> know, they're, they're going to pay. I yeah. mean. It's uh, supply if, and demand. If, if, they, if they encrypt my copies of Doctor Who, I can just download new ones. Yeah. So that's not a problem. Yeah, well, so there's another scam that was out there. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a, you'd call it a scam, but someone calling and saying, hey, we noticed you downloaded illegal material, and now you have to pay to, you know, to get to, to, for that, that material. And so I know someone that was, you know, you know, actually had downloaded some material and was willing to pay and everything, you know. And it was illegally downloaded. Well, yeah, yeah. So they illegally time, downloaded some I material. I a letter from some kind of law firm because, and my my wife's side of the family is not the most technically adept. My stepson was silly enough to go to one of those payday advance places, but he didn't go to a brick and mortar. He went to one online. Of course, gave him his account information so that they could deposit the money. Well, then they sold his account number. He borrowed, I want to say it was $1,500, and by the time that he finally closed down that account, they had taken over 6000 from him. Mm -hmm. And that was about a year and a half ago. To this day, we are still getting phone calls, threatening lawsuits and everything else, and it's just like, that's fine, sue us. Send me a letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You See know, in court. All, all they want to do is make arrangements for payment over the phone, mm -hmm. so they can get another bank account. And it's no, you you send me you send me a letter, or you send me a statement saying what I owe, and then by all means, I'll write you a check and send it to you. But could he have sent a got a green card <laughs> and uh, no. download it to that green card? No, unfortunately not because they want routing numbers oh. and account numbers mm -hmm. and there's no there's no money to be made attacking prepaid, prepaid credit cards. Yeah. Um, well, it would be interesting to see how many services would actually accept a prepaid credit card instead of a, a real credit card. I mean, but but nowadays they can they can verify that you have the funds in your account even if you write them a paper check. So credit cards are even much faster where they can connect to the, the main central database, run that credit card number, find out what kind of balance you have on your card. And as long as it's within, you know, you you have more or enough to as to what you're paying. They're fine with it and they authorize it. There are some places that, uh, like, like mail order uh, websites and whatnot, that do not allow prepaid credit cards. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, like you want to go to Amazon or some legitimate company that you're buying things from, you know, would they, they prefer to have, a, you know, a credit card that is a regular credit card that you pay uh, monthly uh, mm -hmm. payments on, you know? You know, this is where you have to evaluate convenience. Okay, uh, Amazon has my credit card number. It's a legitimate credit card number. It's good. It's all the time. It's just, it, it's just too convenient and so you it's a risk I accept. You put a, a mediocre limit though on that card. I've got mm -hmm. three credit cards. i got one with yeah. a lot of balance. I can get, and I can I've, I've, got, I've got a very nice little credit card with a thousand dollar limit, so yeah. you know there's you can't run up a lot of stuff, but it's a legitimate, you know, and for for like you know, uh, you know, I, I want to spend twenty dollars on a CD, it's fine, and and I can just go to Amazon and you know. Well, so we've had to um, redo our credit card a couple times. There's you know, I, I don't know how somehow my I think my wife went to one of these places where the, the 
clerk was scamming and grabbing card numbers yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, that's going to happen. Physically, you can't yes. prevent right. someone from, from grabbing your card information. So, you know, we had to replace it. And then we were, you know, we were target customers, so we, we did our credit card based on that. And there was a, another, what was that, uh, another, you know, big company like Home that. Depot. Stuff. Home Depot got hammered. Home Depot, and then there was uh, another way. hardware Services. store. So, you know, we've, we've redone our credit. So my wife has a list and knows exactly how to do, go through the whole routine of changing all the accounts that are set up yeah. with those credit card numbers, which is a good thing to have is a list of the companies that have your credit card number. But also, like nowadays, you have your ATM debit card mm -hmm. that acts like a credit card providing you have the funds. Don't use those on websites. Mm -hmm. Because if for some reason they get that information and they pull money out of your bank account, you may never get it back. Yeah, it's not like if a they card. have a credit card and you can prove to the vendor of that credit card you did not make those purchases, those purchases will be removed from your account. You're not responsible. For well, it. so the credit card company said that they actually had a signature of the, one of the transactions, and they looked at it. it. wasn't my wife's signature. Someone had forged her name on a physical piece of paper. Right. You know, so yeah. And, it's, and a lot of times, that's the store's fault. Yeah, well, because they don't they, check ID like right. they used to. Right. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I always find it interesting. People say, uh, "I would never give my credit card to a website. You know, use it online. Yeah, Heavens yeah. no." Yeah. And it's like, well, but you'll give it to some teenager or a restaurant who walks yeah, away yeah. with it. <laughs> right. Have you seen? I one of my credit cards does this, and I have one at one of the big banks, and they have a feature where you can create a virtual credit card number. Yeah. And you can generate and say, I want to put $5 on this credit card because I'm going to this website I haven't used before, and it expires in two months, mm -hmm. and then it just generates a little number for it's you. It's just a one-time oh. use. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's kind of that's kind of cool. But I made the mistake one time I was doing that at, like, Fandango to buy movie tickets, and then I went to the movie theater to pick it up, and I was like, I don't have this credit card number. I just generated it. So, I mean, they ended up, I got to see the movie and everything, but I just had to go through a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I, you know, there's, like, you have to sign the back of the card. I don't yeah. sign the back of my card. I've never been called on that. You know. So what I do, and then people are astonished by it, I put down on the back. Check ID. No, I put down white, age 71. <laughs> yeah. Um, and well, hazel eyes. Well, so you know, I had a, a situation where a buddy of mine who's a quadriplegic, right? So he's in the van and the, all strapped in and stuff like that. He you know, lets you know, his helper go in and, and um, pick up stuff out of the store. So the helper has a credit card. Now, the, the quadriplegic is a white guy. The guy, the helper, is a black guy, and he, you know, has his ID and shows the ID. The clerk looks at this as, yeah, okay, yeah. and approves the, the purchase. You know, so it, it's kind of tough to, you know. Yeah. One of the things I want to leave here and tell you guys, because I wasn't even thinking of this, but mm -hmm. I've been preaching this for two years. I have a Coal America debit card, an ATM card with Visa Loco. Now they mail this to you, and you, you first get it. And because you may have requested it because you want to use the ATM machine. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't catch, what I didn't catch till it was too late, was that it's also a credit card. So, in other words, I got to put a PIN number in here in the ATM machine. If I go to Comerica, I go to Chase Bank, I can use this card. I can go to Kroger's, swipe it, I got to put my PIN number in. But if I wanted to, use it as a credit card, I just have to punch the little screen that says credit and it'd be a credit card. Mm -hmm. So one day I left this somewhere and I went to the pharmacy the next morning, nine o'clock in the morning, and they said it's declined. I had like a $5,000 balance wow. on the credit side and $200 on the debit side. Mm -hmm. Well, I called immediately Co America Security. They got five minutes. They got back to me and says, you're card has been used to buy 400 gallons worth of gas in Taylor, Michigan, and someone bought a plasma TV in Kentucky. And so I immediately contacted Coal America Security, and what they did is they canceled yeah. the credit card portion of this. So if I leave this here, people say, well, I'm going to go swipe some gas, because you don't need no. to put any PIN numbers at the gas pump. So I'm trying to tell senior citizens in my crowd, because they're forgetful, I said, if you've got one of these two-way cards, you better cancel the credit side and use a legitimate credit card, mm -hmm. you know, and not this one because 
it could be devastating. And they made good on it, but I lost my credit for like well, 30 to 60 days. Well, I'm going to turn off the uh, the recording now. It sounds like we're starting to wind down. Thank you very much. The banks very don't tell this as a cautionary.